Hi everybody, welcome to another YDF Live show. My name is Stephen Aitchison, creator of YourDigitalFormula.com, a program to help you become the influencer that you are. Okay, I've got one good thing for you today. That's not one good thing, it's a load of good things, but this could really help if you're kind of into kind of content marketing, which is really about blogging, creating videos, creating content for Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, just Google+, all that kind of stuff. I want to give you some ideas how to get content and there's one big idea that will give you content for the rest of your blogging life or Facebook life or whatever. So that's what I'm going to share with you today and if you find this information useful, you think it's going to be useful for somebody else, please share this video. Uh, it's good to get kind of new people onto the show as well. Um, so share this video if you get a chance and that way you're helping somebody else grow their business online. So what I'm going to talk about today, tell me here who has, by way of comments, who has a blog just now. If you have a blog or you've got a website where you regularly kind of update the content, um, let me know just now if you have a blog. Just now just say yes, I've got a blog or even kind of put your blog kind of address as well. Excellent. So this is kind of for you. Well, it's for you even if you've not got a blog, but it's particularly for kind of blog and bloggers as well, but if you've got a Facebook page, a Google Plus account, Twitter, Instagram, um, YouTube account, this is going to give you some brilliant information. So the trouble with kind of blogs and kind of all the other social media platforms that we do is where do we find the content? Where do we find the good content for it? And I want to share with you one sneaky way that's going to give you content for the rest of your blogging life. Um, so the one best way, in fact, I'm going to show you, that's probably the best way to do it. So I'm just going to dive over just now. And I'm going to show you. Okay, this is what I'm going to show you in practice. Oh, that's my baby. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not my baby. It's um, my niece had a baby, so I'm a, a great uncle. And this is Heidi. Just thought I'd show you that just because I've seen it there. Um, but this, um, I put on, we've got a blog over at um, Your Digital Formula that we've not been updating kind of on a regular basis, maybe once a week or something like that. But I want to do more and get in the kind of search engine rankings and do more quality content, like a thousand words, over a thousand word articles and make them more, uh, much more kind of in depth, if you will, as well. So I've been thinking about, okay, what, do, what content would people want? And then I thought, well, just ask, ask people what content they want. So I, this is my personal profile on Facebook. And I've got here, I'm going to challenge myself and put it out there. And it's quite a big challenge. I want to write a brand new business blog post every day, starting from Monday the 8th, which we've done. Um, if you could have one question answered about growing an online business using the power of social media, what would it be? And I put it can be anything about blogging, email marketing, Facebook, Facebook Lives, advertising, list building, influencer marketing. You get a picture. So ask the question. So a lot of people will know you on your personal profile, kind of on Facebook as a blogger or as a kind of online business owner or as a social media person. So you can ask the question if they have any questions about what you do online, i.e. social media, Facebook, and kind of blogging, and personal development things like that and you can literally get content for goodness knows how long. I'm going to show you another way as well but just to give you an idea we had 15 questions 15 yeah 15 questions from one person that's already started so I'm going to show you how it works in principle so I'm going to go over to the blog blog.yourdigitalformula so Dave Moore um, who is big in the personal development kind of field, he asked, can social media uh, marketing really help my business? And from that one question, we got this kind of blog post. Five ways social media marketing can help your business. Directly answering the question for Dave, but it's going to be so pertinent to a lot of other people as well. So this is not highly ranked in the search engine rankings because we've not been focusing on it. But you can see it's quite an in-depth article. We've got about, I don't know, 1,500 words there or something. And it took bloody ages to write. 
and um, because I was doing research and thinking about it and thinking about the best way to put it forward. So we've got that um, up there as well. Um, another question we had. Um, what was the other kind of one we done yesterday? Yeah, seven common mistakes killing your Facebook page. So we've done that yesterday as well. And again, a fairly in-depth article about um, 1100 words as well. We want to do more linking out um, as well and more inbound links as well with blogging. But you can see the power of asking the question um, to get content for your your blog and even your kind of Facebook lives, for example, if you want to kind of if you're doing talking about personal development, ask the question, what would you like to see me talking about on my Facebook live show, for example, and you can get content for the next 10 years, 15 years, I don't know, until you get a TV show contract. Um, so you'll definitely get content there. But another great place is a site called Cora.com. Q-U-O-R-A dot com. And this is a place where you can ask any question that you have about anything in the world. And it's a brilliant site for getting content ideas. So if we go to Cora, I'm going to just say, for example, you write about this, um, blogging and how to become a better blogger, for example. So they've got their content um, blogs there. Um, and Neil Patel has asked, what are the steps for creating a content marketing persona? So that gives you a question and you could kind of think about that and answer that question. Um, we've got another question there. Do people actually search for specific hashtags on Facebook and Twitter? So you could write seven ways to use hashtags on Facebook, for example. And I, I like list posts because list posts do much better than just having a headline like, how to use hashtags on Facebook. It's not as good as seven ways you can, seven ways to use hashtags on Facebook. It's, that's not a brilliant headline, but it's much better than how to use hashtags on Facebook. Um, and seven, it's been shown, I can't remember the, the study, but it's been shown if you re use um, odd numbers rather than even numbers in your headline, Instead of six ways to use hashtags for Facebook, use seven ways or five ways or three ways or nine ways. Or you could use 11 ways, but I always kind of go under 10. And that's why I always do five, seven or nine, because odd numbers do much better than even numbers when people are clicking through. Don't know why, but that's, that's a study being done in that, and it's true. So Cora is a great place as well. So it doesn't matter what topic. I'm just going to put in a topic here. I don't know if it'll be in but I'll put it. Knitting. I always use that example, I don't know why. Um, so, the question here on knitting, how do you get smaller holes in arm knitting? So if you're into knitting and that's your niche, you could answer that question on your Facebook Live. You could answer it on a video in YouTube. You could answer it kind of in a blog post. There's loads of ways you can repurpose your content as well. So you could write a blog post on how do you get smaller holes in arm, arm knitting, for example, and then make a video of it. And then make, put that video and put it in a blog post, another separate blog post, then put it on YouTube, then put it on Instagram, then put it on Twitter, Google+, Plus. you get the picture. So you could put it all over the place with the same headline. So if anybody types into Google, how do you get smaller holes in arm knitting, then one of your kind of social media sites is going to show up as you answering that question, for example. So it's a brilliant way to get seen in the search engines, brilliant way to repurpose your content as well. And it's just a just a great way to get content for your kind of blogging and social media platforms overall. Um, I was going to say something else and I've forgotten it, forgotten what I was going to say, but it's good. So bear with me. What was I thinking? Where was, my go where was it going? So I was talking about knitting and then I was talking about repurposing the content. And then, oh, I can't remember. Shit. Hate when that happens. Um, I'll come back. I'll come back. So that's the crux of kind of what I wanted to talk about today. I know it's, it's not a kind of a big topic, but it is kind of huge when you think about it. If you're stuck for content, I'm just going to go back. Uh, Susan Jackman is saying it like that one. 
Um, Nora Megan is saying, wow. How do you start? Literally just start. That's from Robin Taylor. How do you start? Do you mean how do you start a blog? How do you start a Facebook page? How do you start with social media? Um, just be a wee bit more specific. And I can certainly answer that for you, Robin. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Nora's saying smart. Thank you very much, Nora. I really appreciate that. Right, I've missed a few comments here just as I've been... Angela Bellelli saying morning missed completely. Shit, that's not so good. Right, um, comments are sticking. Don't know why, I'm just trying to get through them. Just bear with me. Mandy Robinson is saying awesome tips. Excellent. I'm glad, I'm glad you found it useful um, because it is a huge kind of thing for people. If you're, a, if you're a blogger or even producing content on Facebook, you could use the ask method um, to do this as well. Uh, Maria Flynn, content. I can't ever over explain how important this is and how to keep it up and flowing. It is really extremely important. So what Maria is saying there is right. And obviously Maria is a kind of YDF kind of operations manager. And we discuss this all the time. Okay, what's a content marketing strategy or a content strategy, not just a marketing strategy. So we've been talking about that for weeks now, to be honest. And we've just been so busy. We've got YDF Arizona coming up. We're coming to Arizona in October, um, which is going to be great. So we're busy organizing that. We've got interviews kind of lined up. We've got an interview with Dean Graziosi um, tonight as well, which I can't wait for over on the CYT Live page. So we talk about the content strategy, and it's only now we're kind of really getting focused on it and what we're doing, and that's why I kind of set that challenge for myself to write um, 30 blog posts in 30 days. So a blog post every day for the next 30 days. Um, so, and guess what the content for the, today's blog post is going to be? It's going to be the number one way to create content for your blog and social media. Something like that. I'll create a better headline than that. But I can just use this live. I can put this live in it as well. Um, so that's a case of repurposing the content. So you have to repurpose as well. And you can use um, places, you can use software like Meet Edgar, um, for example, um, to kind of repurpose your content and put on various sites. Um, so that's a good way to do that as well. Um, we have a question. Do we have a question? We did, I've just seen it, but I don't know where it is now. Yes. Angela Valeri, question. Is there a site where you can find bloggers in case you can't write your own? P.S. I'll catch replay. Angela, um, you can find, not necessarily bloggers, but writers. So bloggers are writers, um, and some of the writers are bloggers as well. So you can find writers at freelancer.com, for example. So if you go to freelancer.com or upwork.com, I'll put the kind of links in for you as well. Um, freelancer.com and upwork.com. And there's another site where you can find actual kind of writers they're more specific um, blog, and I can't remember the name of it, but I'll find out and kind of put that up for you. But you have to vet them. You have to check out their articles as well. So if ever you hire a writer, make sure you check their work first. And writers can cost anywhere. I've been quoted maybe $30 for an article, right up to $1,500 for an article. And that's really good writers, and they're kind of well-known. Um, but sometimes it's worth it. Some of the articles I've got on my blog over on the CYT page with the AdSense income, that's advertising income from them, some of the blog posts have earned me $7,000. So it might be worth hiring a writer um, for a $1,000 article, for example, if you if it's going to be kind of specific and it's a niche site as well. So it just depends. You've got to kind of weigh it up and how you're creating income from those articles as well. Over on the Your Digital Formula blog, we're creating in income. At the moment, we're just changing our strategy for it, but we're just getting people um, over to the blog, first of all. But then, um, maybe a couple of weeks' time, we're going to have a pop-up so people can sign up for a free four-part video series, um, and then hopefully we can get them to join the YDF program or the YDF Monthly um, as well. So that's what we're going to be doing. But we've been talking about this for ages, myself and Maria Flynn. Um, and that's our kind of strategy going forward. Um, so I hope that helps, Angela. Vanessa and I do. How do you start a blog? How do you create a website? How do you start a Facebook page? 
Right, Vanessa, you've got all the kind of details in there in the YDF program. So everything you've just asked there is exactly what we teach in the YDF program. Um, so how do you start a Facebook page? We teach you exactly how to do that and create the content for it. How do you start a blog? We teach you exactly how to do that as well. And how do you create a website? Basically, a website and a blog is the same. It's one and the same thing. Um, blog is an old kind of term. And really, it just stands for kind of um, updated content, regular updated content, whereas a website was more of a static. It was kind of the same content all the time. It was just for information purposes. But blog, website, interchangeable, exactly the same. So just think of it that way. Um, so we teach you exactly how to do that, Vanessa. So you've got all the details in the YDF program. I know you've not kind of gone into it yet, um, had a chance to go into it, but that's everything we're teaching you in the YDF program. Um, Laurie Emmett, if you're trying to build your own brand, do you think it's better to write all the content on your blog yourself as opposed to using guest posts? A couple of things to do this way, um, Lorraine. You can write some of the content and get guest bloggers in as well, which is obviously why I do on the CYT page. Um, as, and the reason I do that, I'll tell you the kind of thinking behind that. I get lots of kind of guest bloggers on the CYT to give um, the blog more content so it's um, found in the search engines. So the more kind of content you have, the more the search engines are going to come, find you and kind of link to you as well. So that's why I have so many guest bloggers. But I still do kind of articles of my own on the CYT page. Not hardly, nowhere near as much as I used to. I used to write all my content. The first kind of thousand articles were mine. Um, but I hardly write any of them now. Um, just because of the time. I can take. When I'm writing content, I like it to be kind of long and in depth. Apart from the quiz posts. Quiz posts are really easy to make. I can do them myself and just put them kind of up. Um, what also you can do is hire a ghostwriter as well. So you could hire a ghostwriter and get them used to your writing style and hire them to put articles on the blog in your name. So you're still seen as the expert, but you pay a little bit more for a ghostwriter and a good ghostwriter as well, Lorraine. So that's another idea to do it that way as well, if you don't want to kind of bring in a lot of guest bloggers in. So I think that's a good idea to do it that way. Um, and I've done that in the past as well. Hired a ghostwriter who kind of knew my style and kind of wrote for me as well on the blog. So um, that's what she done. She wrote, I think there was about 50 to 100 articles that she'd written. And a lot of them um, were really good. And they'd done well in the search engine rankings as well. So it is worth it getting a ghostwriter as well. Because you always want to keep your content going. And if you find your business is getting too busy or you just can't do it, then hiring somebody to do it or getting somebody to do it is a good idea. And if you've not got the money for that, you can trade off kind of services as well. If you're an expert in growing your Facebook page, you could help them grow the Facebook page and they could write for you on your blog, for example. So use a barter system as well if you don't have a lot to spend for the content marketing side of things. Um, Vanessa, what's the best way to promote your Facebook page without being pushy or tacky? Um, to promote it, um, probably the best way is just to have great content and to share bigger pages content as well. So you're getting known in the kind of Facebook field or in your kind of niche. So if you're into personal development, share the bigger pages and then after you've shared them for maybe a month or two, write to them and say, listen, I love your content. Um, I've been sharing you for the last two months. Would you consider kind of sharing one of mine? For every 10 posts I share, would you share one of mine, for example? So you could get a share agreement going. But do it for free first. Just share the content for free if their page is much bigger than yours. Or you could go to a page that's similar size to yours and get a share agreement going. Uh, and obviously advertising as well. If you've got a kind of viral video, advertise and you get a lot more likes or, and followers to your page as well. So that's a couple of ways, um, Vanessa. Hope that helps. Um, Rod Skews, where would you find a ghostwriter? And um, the places I mentioned earlier on, Rod, uh, freelancer.com and upwork.com are the two biggest sites where you can find writers. So I think that's um, two best places. But there's another site specifically for writers, and I can't remember um, the name of it. I've used it way in the past, a couple of years ago, and I don't even know if it's still up. But if I find any more, I'll kind of I'll get back to you and put the links up for you, Rod. So I hope that helps. Um, have we got any more questions? 
Don't think so. How long have we been on? Don't know how long we've been on. Time just flies when I kind of do these lives. I just don't, I just think it's been a couple of minutes when it's actually been half an hour. Um, Kayan Howland. Um, hi, it's Kai. I'm available to the tribe as per articles and ghostwriting. Private message me. Um, so that's somebody there as well. What you can do as well, another, another way to do it, is on your um, Facebook profile page, just ask somebody if they know a, ghost, a good ghostwriter or a good kind of article writer as well for hire, and you'll come back. There's there'll probably be somebody in your tribe or somebody that um, knows you who has hired a, a kind of writer in the past. So just ask on your Facebook profile page as well. Um, so that's always a good idea. I've done that a couple of times in the past for recommendations for people. Uh, what was it for? Yeah, when the WordPress site kind of went all wonky um, a couple of months ago, I asked them um, for recommendations and I was able to hire somebody from somebody's recommendation. Um, Mira Desi, sometimes use interns for blog content articles. Excellent, that's a good idea as well. Um, so use interns for blog content. So that's good. So that's basically they're kind of writing. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Mira, that's writing for kind of free for you in the hopes that you're going to do something for them in the future or hire them in the future, um, for example. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Um, obviously, that's how kind of internships work normally, but I don't know with regards to blogging, if that's what you mean. Um, Connie Sue, dang it. What would really be great for hearing impaired people? Deaf, I have looked. Um, working hearing health. Work hearing health. What would really be great for hearing impaired people? Deaf, I have looked. Now, I'm not quite getting that question there. Um, Connie, if you could just clarify what, what you mean. Um, Chris Collier Wilkinson has joined us. Question, I was planning on doing this with a business partner and best friend of many years and each of us branching off with our special talents and interests. Meeting together in the middle, um, one a main page, we'd work together. Do you think this would be a good strategy? Yes, it would, Chris. It depends on your relationship. If you're saying you've got a brilliant relationship and you're in this together and you've got the same kind of goal going forward, then it is a good a good idea to do that. So you could have the two of you kind of joining together and writing the content for it or kind of doing live shows or doing videos and stuff like that as well. So you can do that. I know kind of some of the YDF tribe members do that. Travis and Pete, for example, they obviously do that for their blog. Um, sorry, for their kind of live show as well. They kind of work together and for the blog as well, um, obviously. So yeah, it is a good idea. It just depends on the relationship you've got. Yes, yeah, you're saying brilliant there. So um, yes, definitely I would go for that. And it kind of cuts the, the kind of workload in half. If you're all about kind of writing and blog articles and kind of content producing. Um, so it's not just about blog articles. It's about kind of content for your whole social media um, kind of strategy. So it's kind of Facebook and Twitter, as I said, Instagram, kind of YouTube and things like that. So you can cut the content workloads in half, um, definitely. Um, Chris Collier, oh yes, saw them with Maria. Yeah, Travis and Pete are really brilliant. They're up and coming, Travis and Pete, and they've got a brilliant live show. And they've just recently started a Facebook page and a blog. Um, so they're really up and coming. And they're, they're kind of going places. They know exactly where they're going. And it's brilliant. When you know where you're going, um, you'll get there. It's just a matter of how you get there. But you don't worry about that. You just keep and take action steps every single day. Um, Mira Desi is just clarifying. Um, shit, where did it go? Yeah, the internships are unpaid because they need um, the hours for their education. Ah, right, I'm with you. Excellent. Um, Mira is saying, yes, they need hours for certification. I give them that and have them research and write as part of their internship. Excellent. I love that, Mira. I love that. That's a brilliant way to do it as well. Um, so you get interns in as well. So I love that idea. And um, we've got any more questions. Shane Atkinson. Hi, Stephen. Is there such a thing as posting too many blog posts or articles per day on our Facebook page? What frequency should we aim for without bombarding our audience? I would probably go for three for one. So three pieces of content to one blog post. Um, that's kind of along the experiment all the time, Jen. It's, it's good to experiment. So I would go three three pieces of content. That could be an image quote or a video or a Facebook Live. And then a kind of blog post. 
So if you're doing it 12 times per day, you'd have four blog posts per day. If you're doing, if you're posting 24 times a day, obviously you'd have eight kind of blog posts per day. And test the times as well. Um, for your blog posts in particular, um, because your blog posts, they seem to do better at peak times, but the image quotes and the videos and the Facebook Lives are not um, kind of as peak time dependent, if that makes sense. But blog posts are kind of like peak time dependent. And I've tested this out um, kind of on my page as well, but sometimes they do well in the morning, but more or less in the evening, they do much better, the blog posts, um, because there's more people on, um, obviously, as well. It depends on the language um, that you're kind of targeting as well. Because um, you get people from all over the world, and so a lot of them don't speak English, obviously, but you still get these, or good English. Um, so they still come to your page. So it's better in the evenings when you've got the kind of English-speaking speaking countries um, as well that you're targeting. Um, any more questions? Just looking. So Jackman, good to know. Cheryl Fletcher, greening. Awesome. So glad to get this information. Brilliant, Cheryl. Um, Kayan, I just had a successful spring working for four interns. Excellent. I'd recommend, I'd recommend making sure you meet in person. Have plenty of time to edit and review. Experiences vary, so interview. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Kayan's talking about the the kind of internships there as well for writing. Catherine Cox is in the house. Hi to you. Um, good to see you back, Catherine. I haven't seen you for a bit. Or maybe I've just missed your comments or I've just missed you. But good to see you anyway. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. I think we're coming up for half an hour. Have we got any more questions before? Nope. So that's been half an hour just now. I hope that was useful for you. If it was, remember to share this. It might be useful for somebody else. Um, and that's it. I'll put the, the links in for you. I'll put the links that I kind of mentioned today. And obviously, if you want to join our YDF monthly program, um, you can join us. We've got the link above the comments. Yeah, we've got the link above the comments if you want to join the YDF monthly. It's kind of like training like this, but it's with myself and Maria Flynn as well. Um, so it's great content every single month, 40 minutes, we kind of speak about a specific topic, it could be something like this, and then 40 minutes Q&A session afterwards, and it's the first Monday of every month. So if you want to join us there, you can, definitely, I would love to have you there. So remember, click the link above if you want to join us there. And if you're a YDF Tribe member, remember, you get the YDF monthly training for free, so you don't have to join that. So don't sign up for that if you're a YDF Tribe member because um, you get that for free. Um, I think that's us for just now. Um, Maria Flynn, great show today. Get to blogging, folks. It's worth every minute. It is really worth every minute. To give you an idea, blogging, my blogging strategy kind of nets me about between anywhere between sixty and $100,000 per year because of the blog content I've got and the way I'm monetizing it as well. Um, and that's nothing to be kind of sniffed at, so that's why I focus a lot on the blogs. With the YDF blog, it's not going to be so much about the money. It's going to be about getting people um, kind of educated about doing social media online and for the business and getting them into a kind of YDF monthly and a YDF main program as well. That's the main focus was going to be, and that's how we monetize that site. The CYT site is monetized through ads from Google, and that's how we monetize them. Um, so it makes between 60 and 100,000. Some years it's different. Some years kind of goes down. Some years it goes way up. I think the, the biggest year we had was about 110,000. Uh, it should be more. So you kind of have to optimize all the time. But that's how much um, we kind of get. And that kind of pays for a lot of the... We put that straight back into the business and that pays for kind of staff. Um, so it's not as if that's going in my back pocket. That of the, Obviously, all that money kind of goes into kind of YDF and the business as well. But it's good. It's, it's good money if you can get that up and running. But be consistent. Show up every day, take action every day if that is going to be your thing because you might uh, this might not be your um, modality for kind of getting your education out there. So you might not enjoy writing, for example. You might prefer kind of doing videos or you might prefer doing podcasts, audio, for example, as well. And that's another way you can repurpose your content, turn it into an audio kind of file and put it into a podcast. So hundreds of ways. We could talk about this for hours. Um Okay, so that's it for just now. Hope you have a brilliant day. Hope that was useful. And I'll see you tomorrow again. Namaste. Take care. Bye now.